We're going to dive into this video straight off the bat, tell you how to take the rear shocks off of the Yamaha Wee 50. This is a older than 2017 model Wee 50, 2002 in specific, I believe. And they're all the same, which is why I say I believe, because it doesn't really matter. All Wee 50s are the same until 2017. So you see we got the shock off of the Wee 50 just by removing two bolts. So there's two shocks on the Wee 50, obviously. Once you get both shocks off, bring it over to the bench, put it in the vise, and the shocks can be taken apart by the methods you see I'm using right here. With just a open end wrench and a screwdriver to use as leverage through the eyelets of the shock mount, you can unscrew the shock shaft from the mount. This is the only way you can get this shock mount off of the shock shaft. And of course, this is important because this is how you are going to remove the spring from the shock, which we'll be replacing with the Canon Racecraft 35 inch pound springs that I had custom ordered from Canon Racecraft. I'm going to go over the details of the Wee 50 suspension and why it's not ideal for most kids that ride or race in specific, which is what we were doing. The reason I went to the lighter rear spring were for several reasons, but safety mostly. Just observed the uh, action of the bike going through the air being a little more nosedivey than I liked it to while Renan was racing. And I admit that this probably has everything to do with the rider. They can control the action and the attitude of the bike while it's flying in the air. But for kids that are three years old to six years old, sometimes just doesn't always work out to where they know how to do that. So safety was my biggest concern in making this change and optimizing the bike for my son, who is definitely not heavy enough for the OEM springs. So as you can see, everything was removed and I'm in the process now of reassembling the shock. So I've put a dab of oil on the shock shaft springs because it was pretty tight getting the uh, eyelet mount off. So we slip on the 35 inch pound spring and now we're going to go ahead and compress that so we can put the shock mount eyelet back on. So this process was all being figured out as I was filming it and you see that we just really need to get the spring compressed now that the camera's back in focus and lock the spring down so we can get the eyelet on. Obviously I'm going to show you my struggle with doing this as it's not all through rose colored glasses sometimes and we're going to see just how difficult it was to try to grab the spring and compress it down using just my my strength to um, get it as far down as it needed. So now that I did that, I'm going to go ahead and put the shock mount or the eyelet back on to the shock shaft and I felt as if I wanted to lubricate this well enough to uh, not gall up or strip the threads. So now that the parts are lubricated, we thread them on and you can see it's not going on super easy. There are pinches in that shock mount which uh, are intended to lock that mount to the, to the shock shaft. So it's a little bit harder to install as you can see. So we release the spring onto the mount and now we're going to go ahead and tighten that shock mount eyelet to the shock shaft. So it's a little bit difficult to find a way to get that wrench in there. So use your creative means and think outside the box a little bit. But basically you want to get this wrench under there to tighten the eyelet onto the shaft. However you have to do that, which you can see the methods I used here. So go ahead and get that mount tightened all the way as best you can. Obviously, uh, there's no torque specification on this, so just use your best judgment and get it as tight as you think. It's not going to come loose because the spring pressure that's going to be applied to it. However, use your best judgment. Now that the springs are installed on both shocks, we'll go ahead and remount them to the bike. This process is super easy. It's really self-explanatory basically slip the top mount on 
and then slide the bottom mount over the mounting flange, reinstall the bolts, and you'll have your new Peewee 50 with softer springs. This is a major change from the OEM springs, which are 75 inch pounds each, I believe, which is 150 pounds total. That is very stiff for kids that are ranging from 30 to 60 pounds. So you want to optimize your bike to what your kid's weight is. For me, it was 35 inch pound springs to support a 50 pound kid, which gave me a total sprung weight of 70 pounds. I hope you enjoyed the process and my methods of installing the springs. As you can see, this is going to change the way your kid rides and for me, make a safer bike as you can see here. So hopefully this video is helpful in helping you make your Pee Wee 50 safer for your kids. If you're interested, here are some other videos on Pee Wee 50 suspensions.